From the creators of Trailblazer, uh, the John Muir Trail, comes Trailblazer, the Arizona Trail, the sequel and a different game all in of itself. This is a two to four player worker placement game that takes roughly about an hour and a half to two hours to play. Uh, in this game, you're going to be basically taking workers and placing them on certain areas to visit the uh, Arizona Trail. This is a large trail, about 800 miles, where you'll be traveling through plateaus and plains and mountains and grasslands to see the wildlife the flora and the fauna. You'll go through a number of weeks, eight to be specific, and encounter all different types of things. So be utilizing your player board to build on top of that, utilizing tetrominoes, as well as, of course, keeping track of your water, your health, and your supplies, as well as, of course, your currency. Your objective in the game is to gain as much Arizona grit and, of course, the gold as possible. You'll strengthen yourself by checking your gold minus your grit at the end of the game, and whoever has the most points is the winner. But of course, beware of the Gila monster who will try and stop you along the way. Anyway, let's talk about the setup of the game, how to play, and then of course, my review. To set up the game, the Arizona Trail, the first thing you do is place the game board phase up in front of all players. You are playing a two-player game in this instance, or we are, and so we're going to explain that there are spaces on the game board which you may place, but only in a larger player game. Then, you're going to go ahead and take a specific deck of cards. The first one is going to be the yellow deck. It's going to have a little yellow insignia here. And you're going to place four of them in the middle section of the board. Then, there are the eighth, fourth, and first cards, which you'll be placing in the first, second, and third spaces in the middle of the game board. The Gila monster and the cacti will be placed in the middle there as well. And then, for the first, second, third, and possibly even fourth player, you'll place markers to indicate the player order. You'll have these little... Uh, flowers here, and you'll shuffle them up and then you'll reveal them one at a time, placing uh, these tan uh, uh, cubes on the spaces based on the number going from top to bottom to represent the four different locations on the game board. Next, you're going to have this here, which is your gateway resources cards. You'll shuffle this deck and place it down and flip over one, and that will be resources you start off with the, at the beginning of the game. Left hand side of the game board, let's talk about those. So these are our flora, and on the other side is our fauna. On this side here, you're going to have a deck of flora, which are all the different types of uh, plants, and you'll take the deck, shuffle it, and deal out four of them from top to bottom. Then, on the far left-hand side, you're going to notice that there are two tetrominoes for each of the different types, and this is here is going to be all flora, so it'll be a two, so it'll be here, threes, fours, and fives, with the rest of them presiding on the far left-hand side of the game board. You can go ahead and set aside these cards here with the little moon and the clouds, which we'll be using later, as well as any poison tokens. And then, of course, each of the different types of animals. There are four animals that you're mainly going to be using in the game. You're going to have the jackalope, you're going to have the javelina, the roadrunner, and the desert tortoise. There should be four cards for each of them, but you're only going to have one at a time throughout the game, but multiple players can have them at different times. Then you have the bottom section of the game board. For every player playing the game, go ahead and place one of their tokens down on the one section at each of the train levels. Then, of course, on the right-hand side of the game board, you have the fauna, the animals. You're going to shuffle the deck of animals, you're going to place four of them face up in their spaces, and then you're going to be taking the tetrominoes and doing the same thing. The twos, the two threes, two fours, two fives, and placing the extras on the right-hand side of the game board. Don't forget, there's also going to be this little area here where you're going to be climbing up throughout the game. Go ahead and place each player's tokens at the bottom rung of this area. And finally, the very bottom area is going to include each of the player's tokens at the very bottom middle section of the board, which will be moved very shortly. And then last but not least, any extra tokens left to set aside, you can move aside, and you're going to have these location cards, just like you saw the ones that are in the, currently on the game board, the yellow ones. You'll have the rest of them that are going to be added or switched as the weeks progress. And you have the red deck, the blue, and the green one in addition. Uh, and that's pretty much the full set of the main game board. The last thing is the player boards. Player board is actually quite simple. Give every single player a player board itself, and then every single player is going to be getting each of the different resources and one of them. Uh, cobalt, the uh, um, copper, iron, one supply, water, and a health. Last but not least, give them a player reference and the game is pretty much set up. Starting the game is fairly simple. The first thing that you're going to be doing is gaining any gateway resources. And in this case, we have the Sahara Suda, and that says that we're going to gain two supplies and a water. So you'll actually move those on your grid, two supplies and a water. 
Then you're going to actually do the cross arrows. So select at the beginning of the game anywhere you want to place them in any of the different sides of the arrows and gain that benefit. Now, if it's any other round, the only way you can move these arrows is based on the positioning. So if you have the uh, far left hand side, on the far left hand side, and it's on the heart area, you can either move it up one for a grit or down for two water. Your other options are you can move them to any of the other arrowed spaces, but it has to be in the same space where you, from where you left. So if I'm on the right hand side space here, I can move over here to the desert location, or I can go over here for two copper. Each player will do that, and only the first round you actually get to select your slot. Next, of course, is going to be the Gila Monster. Based on the amount of victory points and or grit, as well as resources, and there's like tiebreakers, a player is gonna get the Gila Monster. And you can place it on any of the spaces that have a flora or fauna piece. It could be the Tetramonos, it could be a card. And when you place it, that card is going to be reserved for nobody. Nobody can take the card for that round while the Gila Monster is there. And in addition, everything in the row of the Gila Monster is also going to have an extra cost in resources in order to take that card. Okay, now that we've done all the basic setup, the last thing is this cacti here, which also has rules as to who somebody get, who, who's going to get it. And the cactus just means that whenever a player takes a card, a flora or a fauna, that shows a little star, they're gonna get one victory point. It's a nice little catch-up mechanic. Okay, now the traveling phase. This is the worker placement phase of the game. We're based on these little workers here, the little mountains. You'll be placing them down in little areas on the game board. And I'll just go over them. The basic idea of worker placement, which is I place one of my workers down on a space, then I take that action, I do everything I can based on that action, and I pass, and it continues until we have no workers left, okay? Oh, here's how they go. Over here on the far right-hand side, you'll notice that there is a spot for three and four players. These spaces are connected spaces, which means you can only have one of your workers there. When you place here, you pay the resource cost in Cobalt at the very top of it, and then you take the card or one of the Tetraminos. If you take a Tetramino, you're going to go up on this space here. This space has bonus payments that you can pay, either one and then two, to move up farther on the track. Whenever you move up on any track in this game period, you'll gain whatever benefit is presented on there, which will then allow you to gain maybe even more benefits. Tetraminos will go onto your player board. Your player board is going to have an area on it which represents the spaces for where you can place flora and fauna. Your first one, you must always cover the Arizona state flag. After you've done that, as long as one of your Tetraminos covers another space, you're fine. Your objective is to obviously cover this as much as possible and move up on this track as much as you can as well. So you've placed, you've spent the Cobalt, then you are going to take either one of these Tetraminos and place it and gain rewards based on how you placed it, or of course you can take one of these cards here. When you take cards, they're going to provide a benefit as well. The top right hand side is going to have some type of benefit. It could be a star for the cactus player, or it could be one of these little um, roses that is going to allow, it's like a cactus rose, that let you take a small Tetramino place piece to place it on your board. And then of course, at the very bottom right is gonna be resources you can gain, cobalt, gold, maybe moving up on the track. And that's how all these work. And the same is said for the right hand side as well. The only difference is, instead of these cards here, which also give you set bonuses at the, end, at the end of the game for having four of the same or four different, you'll have the fauna. These are actions that you'll be taking once around that will give you a benefit. There's going to be some unique um, ability or action that you can take at the very top of the card. Maybe you'll reduce one of your poison. Um, it'll have a number of spaces where you'll be placing cubes to show how many times you can do this ability and once per turn, and then what the ability is. They could range from giving you extra gold when you get extra gold, to being able to move up on a track farther, to taking an extra tetramino when you take one of a certain type, etc, etc. And they function in the same way, take the card, place it in front of you, gain the benefits, pay the cost, etc. Okay, what else? Well, there is going to be this space in the middle. This is the turn order section and you must actually choose one of them. Now there are three of these little mountains uh, that you're starting with, three player tokens or workers. I suggest you place at least one of each for each player there to indicate that you must actually place here to determine order for the next round. And there's a cost to it. It could be supplies, supplies and water, supplies and health, or two supplies. And supplies are very hard to get and expensive, so you always want to kind of dictate whether or not it's worth going first or not. Over in the bottom area is also the area with the uh, 
uh, it's called the gateway resources. You can place your worker here to gain the re gateway resources again, or you can place one of your workers in one of these three arrows on the bottom right that will allow you to move your worker just as though you were moving it with a crossed arrows action. The only difference is that you can only place one worker in these areas and wherever location you place is where you have to move to. So if I have the middle right and I place one of my mountains on the far left, then I must move this guy to the right hand side of the farthest left area on the crossed arrows. And those are pretty much um, all the basic actions in the game. There's a main action, a really important one, that is these guys here. These are the locations. On the far left-hand side is the cost of the location, and you'll notice that there are some costs in black. These are requirements, meaning you must have your piece move on this bottom little area here, a certain number of spaces, in order to meet these requirements. And then there's a cost, supplies and water, and benefits you will get. And these guys here will give you benefits throughout the game as you gather them, and also benefits based on your player board, which we'll talk about in a second. How do you move across here on this area here? Well, there's a number of ways you can do so. Gathering certain cards will have the symbols of the mountains and desert and plateaus, etc., etc. And whenever you have one of those symbols, you'll move your marker down on the track there. And you'll move it across this board here. If you ever hit one of these little tokens here, you'll get an extra single worker for one round that you'll then have to remove. And as you move to the very end, you'll start getting extremely powerful rewards. These are the other things here in the game. These are gonna be cards that require you to uh, complete them to gain the ability or bonus. There's a first place, last place type of ability or bonus. You can gain grit, you can gain gold. Hey, reach level four on the mountain track. Well, I did that, so now I gained the benefit. Each of these are gonna have a requirement as to when you can hit them. This is gonna be for round one up until the next point. And then you can have this one, this is gonna trigger at round four, and this will trigger at the end of the game, scoring you hopefully lots and lots of points. And so that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna place your different characters on the game board, gathering flora and fauna, adding tetrominoes to your game board of the flora and fauna, going to the crossroad sections to gain resources, or of course, hitting up this resource area as well to score an extra amount of benefits that you could possibly get. And then of course the main thing, my main favorite thing is, well, I guess the tetramino is really important as well, but gaining these cards here for a benefit. And after you're done with that, you're going to move on to the last phase, which is the refresh phase. You're going to check to see at weeks four and eight if you have to actually do the achievement cards and see who gets points. You will change the turn order based on uh, who placed where on the game board. And then you're going to return all the cards and tokens and whatnot. You'll return the cactus, you'll return the gila monster, add any of these flora and fauna and tetramonos from the supply. And the only thing that ever refreshes when you purchase one is these specific cards here. Otherwise, they don't refresh until this end phase here. And then after that, you'll just change passages if required, which are gonna be these cards here. You'll change them whenever there is a, a little location marker indicating that you're gonna get the next best locations to deal with. And that's the basic idea of the game. The game is gonna go from round one to round two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, triggering different objectives, triggering the different passages, allowing you to gather new cards and flora and fauna while building out your tetramino pieces onto your grid. The end of the game you check to see. Uh, your grit, whenever you gain it, will go on the left-hand side of the game board, going down on these grit spaces. And your gold is going to go on the top uh, section, going to the right. And what happens is you'll push all the way around the board, and you'll do the same for the grit, and then you will check to see how much gold you have minus your grit. And that will be your total points. So the game actually scores a lower number of points than you might think, because you're going to have to try and make them kind of go past each other on the track. Did you do it? If so, you won, and you mastered the Arizona Trail. Okay, what do I think about it? Trailblazer, the Arizona Trail, is the second in the line of the Trailblazer experience. Uh, this does share some similarities in style, designer style is what I call it, to the original game. But I feel like it's got a lot more attached theme. It's got some cool miniatures. There are ways in which you can get additional workers when going up on this track here, when placing your tetrominoes, as well as gaining the creatures, which will give you bonuses that you can utilize from turn to turn. I just felt like it was going through this kind of wild desert Arizona adventure, moving around, gathering new flora and fauna, attaching and equipping them to my board with the tetrominoes, and collecting cards for sets. It wasn't just like I felt like, oh, I was just, this is a set collection game. No, it's a wide variety. You need resource management, 
you need to make sure that you gather the correct cards in order for your flora and fauna to not only give you the resources that you need to buy the tetrominoes and other cards, but also for set bonuses. And then it's all about placement. It's got a puzzle experience that my wife really, really loves placing on this board here in order to give you the exact like spaces and pieces that you need in order to hit the requirements. What's also cool is there's a little bottom outline on each of the tetrominoes that explains where, how they need to be placed when going on a grid. So basically if you imagine a Tetris grid and this thing falling, it always has to fall where the border is. And so that can make some weird changes where you think you could place this like this, but you can't. The border is here, so it must be placed like this when going onto your grid. Now it can be placed anywhere as long as it's connected to a previously placed piece, as long as the first piece was placed on the banner of the American, the, the, the Arizona like state location. Um, and just trying to fill it up is like a unique little experience. It gives you lots of bonuses. Speaking of bonuses, the board will give you bonuses as well. You can score bonus gold for having three five pieces on your game board or for having six two pieces. Or if you're really good, you can have one of each of the different type of tetrominoes. So two twos, two threes, two fours, and two fives. And if you can fill your board like that, you can score eight victory points. Additionally, too, if you get four passage cards of the same type, you can score some extra cobalt, or if you get four passage cards of different types, you can get two bags. And finally, if you manage to complete your mural by the end of the game, you can score five additional victory points. The rest of the game board is meant to just simply keep track of your resources. It is a solid, high quality, really great experience. There's only a few nitpicks I have before I gush again. Now, the first nitpick is that you must place for turn order. I really wish these were not, I really wish these were like at the end of each player's selection and like, I didn't feel like I was wasting a worker every single time I placed these. I was always, me and um, the players playing the game were always disheartened by the fact that we had to spend and this was a cost as a worker. It's like an action that I must take. And I really wish there was some other way that that could be done. I know what it symbolizes, which I really like the theme of, where you're like, you have to, as going through the trail, the faster you go, the more you have to kind of suffer, the more damage you can suffer, water you need to drink or supplies you need to use. I like all that, I really do, but I just don't like the turn order experience. It's such a light thing, but it's just something that kind of bothered me where I was like, I don't actually have three workers, I have two and I have to lose resources with the third one. Eh. Um, and the other thing is, uh, at the very beginning, there's like certain resources that are like high more, much more required, and like how these like spaces, these like side spaces work, where you have to move from one section to another to gain the other benefits. You're going to sometimes need resources and sometimes need currency. And because the currency is like lopsided as to like how you gain, like specifically even the items, it can be that one resource is hard to get for another space or another resource. I mean, I'm sure there are people who are going to like that, but sometimes it just drove me nuts where I'm like fighting to get this one type of resource and it took me a while to do so. Um, whereas other things that like I was flourishing in, I could just flourish even more in. And it kind of pits me into one position where I'd like to do some, maybe something else. Um, otherwise, I don't think I have a whole lot else negative to say. The Gila monster uh, is not really for me. This is kind of like a worker placement game where there's already enough things going on where people are taking things and whatnot. Most of the time when I placed this Gila monster, I wasn't sure what I was going to want to take later in the round. And it mostly hurt me and other players. So I get it. He's kind of a bad guy. Um, but for me, I'd probably just not play with him, I suppose. He wasn't terrible or annoying or anything like that. He just like, this. Uh, some cases he was annoying, but he wasn't like a terrible like... I feature. I think a lot of people were going to like that kind of aggressive aspect to it, but I just kind of didn't. Cactus is fine. It's a good catch-up mechanic, and it makes players decide whether they want to take a certain card or not. And then, of course, the animals. Beautiful, beautiful animals with their unique aspects. Jackalope's my favorite, giving you bonus actions. I love bonus actions in a worker placement game. That's probably the best. And, of course, going up on both of the tracks is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a really solid worker placement game. It's, it's very different. It's very unique to other ones that I have played before. I love the idea of kind of adding a puzzling aspect to it, building on your board, buying tetrominoes, kind of deciding which route you want to go. And most of the time you definitely want to fill up this board as much as you can and go for his, like, and it's just, you want to do everything in this game. There's a lot of variety here, actually. Quality of art, excellent. Quality of the game, even though this is a prototype, it's not the full thing, is excellent. Overall, yes, Trail, the Arizona Trail, is a solid, fun worker placement. Minus just the dang placement of the first, second, third player, this game is so good. I would easily play this again, no problem, with any number of players. Two works just as well as four.
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Trailblazer, the Arizona Trail. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below where you can go ahead and back it if you want, or if it's later on, there is a link for you to purchase it. As well as check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, consider lists, and of course, our live stream every 6.30 p.m. PST on Sunday, and on Wednesday, we have one every other week on whatnot at 6.30 p.m. PST as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to going on the Arizona Trail with you next time.